What's up everybody, Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out MIDI Madness 3 and some of the very, very cool things you can do with this. This is a device that generates melodies, chord progressions, bass lines, really anything that has to do with notes on a keyboard. You can make it or randomize it inside of MIDI Madness and it sounds good more often than not. You got a lot of options on how to sculpt the randomness to make sure it's gonna get closer to what you're really looking for, but really, really fantastic. So I'm just gonna outline some of the highlights I found while working with this and I think you're gonna be super impressed. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so the very first thing that's absolutely incredible about MIDI Madness 3 is the fact that you load the VST inside of MIDI Madness itself. You don't have to do any complicated routing inside of any DAW. You just come over here to synth and choose your synth from here and it's gonna be loaded. Then you just click right here and your synth will open up. You can choose your presets, make any adjustments to the sound that you want. And it actually gets a lot better than that. We're gonna get into it in a second, but that is phenomenal. No more routing, MIDI in, MIDI out, blah, blah, blah. If you don't see your synth in here, you come over here to the little gear icon, set your folder where your synths are, and just hit scan, and it'll scan it. It might take a second depending on how long or how many synths you have, so just let it do its thing and then jump back in and you won't have to think about it ever again. So we do have some really kind of basic options up here at the top, so I'm gonna jump right through that, skip right through. I'm gonna jump down here to the sequence because this is where things start getting really cool. All you need to do is hit generate, and you get a new sequence. Let's check it out. Already another great one. Let's say I like that before we move on and hit generate again. I can do a couple of different things. One, I can drag and drop it to clip one to save it for later, and then I can just drag and drop from that clip spot into my DAW or right from this main window into my DAW, whatever I wanna do drag and drop, super simple. Now, not only that, I can actually drag and drop MIDI into MIDI badness. Is that not crazy? So if I come into, let's say some MIDI right here, I can drag and drop from my browser into MIDI madness. And now I have that base MIDI. That's probably not a good uh, example, but boom, look at that. Not only can you drag and drop out, but you can drag and drop into MIDI madness. Absolutely phenomenal. We can also choose our scale. The baseline inside of this little project is A minor, so I chose an A minor here. You can choose your bar length or your loop length up to 32 bars. That is really long, so I'm going to bring it back down to two, so it's pretty manageable. Hit generate again. Look at that. The three times I've hit the generate button has always given me back a result that's actually, you know, worth listening to. It's not like a throwaway. I just get hit it a couple times and I'm getting something really good and easily giving me some juice and a creative push to keep going. You know what I'm saying? So really great in that regard. So we can go a bit further. As I said before, we've got quite a bit of control over what gets generated up here. And you do that down here at the parameter section. So first of all, notes. Which notes do you want to be generated? As you slide up higher, the chances that that note will be generated will increase. So down here, way less chance that C is going to be generated. Up here, way more. And if you want to come in and select maybe a chord, again, I'm working in A minor, so maybe I want to just stay inside of an A minor chord, hit A minor, hit generate, and now these are only notes inside of an A minor chord. Or we can do scales. If I want to come in here, A, natural minor, regenerate. Again, it still sounds good. It's impossible to mess it up, right? Uh, next up, velocity. We can choose the chance that any velocity will happen. If it's down here, it, it does have a chance that one note will have a zero velocity, which means if your VST has velocity sensitivity turned on, it won't play. If you want to turn it up and always get harder hitting notes, just simply take that, slide it over closer to here, and it will always be louder. And of course, you have control over this either way you want. Thank you. 
again, super dope. Anyway, octave, we can choose what octaves the notes are generated at. So if I come over here and hit something like this, generate again, they're gonna be generated down there further down the, the spectrum. So this is very useful. So if I come in and just do zero one and then go to polyphony and just have it on one note, I can easily create bass lines. You see what I'm saying? Which gives me a nice segue into polyphony. You can get up to 16 notes happening at one time as long as your synth can support it at two, but this will generate that. So if I maybe want just triads to happen, simply pull that up all the way to the top, hit generate, and boom, look at a sequence of triads or a sequence of chords. <laughs> So that's how dope this thing is. I've got a chord sequencer, a melody sequencer, a bass line maker, everything inside of here. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this. Let's generate again. <laughs> it's just so good. Uh, length is how long the length of these notes happen for. Uh, we can, if you hover over any of these, it will tell you what it is. So let's say I want a couple of 16th notes in there. Just pull up the, the probability that 16 notes will be generated up a little bit. Also pull up uh, the stop here. This will just mean that there's gonna be some gaps. If you pull it down, it's just gonna generate every single note. Look at that. Uh, if I pull it, uh, oops. If I pull it up a little bit, we'll get some stops and some rests in there. And that's, you know, I think that's a little bit better for generating melodies. So that's how to do it, the basics, super dope. We can also turn off snap to bar. Uh, we can tr change the division here. So good, uh, loop, freestyle, trigger, got the gain, CC only. We got macro controls, which we can link to our synths. And that brings me to the next thing, which is this automating of synth parameters. So if I come over here to CC1 and I open up Synth Master, let's say I wanna automate the cutoff frequency for the filter one. Let's go ahead and play it. So let's say I wanna automate that. What I would do inside of cutoff is I'd right click and remove MIDI link with CC111 because I wanna make a new link. So I'd right click again and MIDI learn for current preset. Jump back in here to MIDI madness. And again, I'm on CC1. So I wanna come down here right here and go send MIDI learn. And that's, you'll, you might've seen it jump over here. That's set up the connection between the two parameters. So the next thing I need to do is turn the chance up that there will be some automation happening and go ahead and hit regenerate CC1. And now if I play it, you can see that that's being automated. And you can do that for any MIDI learnable parameter inside of any synth that has that capability. Absolutely phenomenal. This MIDI madness is really just madness. It's so dope. You heard it. I mean, I'm just randomly generating stuff and it's sounding good each and every time. I don't can't explain it. I can't explain it. I have no idea what's going on. It's just that cool. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I know you like tools like this. MIDI Madness needs to be on your radar. Version three, big step up from version two. Loading your synth inside of here, phenomenal. Just so cool. Anyway, it's available now on pluginboutique.com. Links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video.